1976, I gave my life to Christ. It was an amazing event. I was a man alone in his living room on his knees, crying out and asking God to forgive him. And in that moment, Jesus poured himself into my life. And I was filled with the Holy Spirit. In 1979, God began to speak his words into my life. He told me that the time has come that he was no longer a still small voice. And that the time was short and the harvest was no lifetime away. In 1980, God told me to make my days a path to follow and to follow the signs that were so clearly given. I've spent the last three decades or more seeking His wisdom, spending time in His Word, and manifesting the inspired visions that He's put into my heart and my spirit and that they have, and which have been manifest through my hands. Though I have no training in any of these disciplines, in architecture, in sculpture, in graphics, in writing, God has allowed me to grow into these disciplines so that I could manifest His visions. In 1988, God spoke His scripture mandate into my life and gave me Isaiah chapter 43. And in that chapter, God promises. He says, I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. I have made him. Bring forth the blind that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? God has promised to gather the nations. And in 1980, God gave me a vision of a building. It was a mountain of a building. I remember thinking that thought and it was such an enormous vision that welled within me that I could only embrace it for a matter of months before it began to consume me and I had to die to it. And for 20 years it was lost and I didn't even remember it until 19, uh, two, in the year 2000 I mentioned it to Sheila, my wife. and. She said, well, let's pray about it. And so uh, she, she did. She prayed about it and, uh, and asked for a sign that if this truly was of God, that he would bring a confirmation. Well, in, in the year 2000, it was revived again because God brought a prophetic confirmation through someone that didn't even know us and uh, had met Sheila at a women's conference and asked her about a huge building that she was building. It was amazing. And I spent, uh, I spent uh, several months just preparing and thinking about it again. And, and uh, I began, began getting pregnant with this massive worship center. And I had to give birth to it and with that confirmation I began and I spent nearly a year building the model the scale model of this central section that you see in this large rendering of the Mount Zion Worship Center which by the way I had no idea what it was to be called until the first uh, few weeks of beginning on the model construction and I had no, I really no idea what it would look like when I began, but God revealed what it would look like and the size of the building. And the vision just expanded inside of me as I walked forward with it and, 
began to manifest the model. And what you see is just one side of a four-sided building. Mount Zion is actually one quarter of a mile wide and, and one quarter of a mile deep. There are four sides, four equal sides, and on each side are 7,000 rooms. You would think of them as motel rooms, but God thinks of them as bridal chambers. They're places in which people will come from all over the world to stay and come into the fullness of God's Spirit and be taught in the fullness of His Spirit and then take that anointing back to their countries. In, uh, in this, this is a quarter of a mile square building and 26 stories tall at the center. In the center of the building is a 70,000 seat auditorium that sits in the center and many of the rooms that are aligned around the outer perimeter actually have balconies and views of the inner uh, auditorium, the inner large worship area. And in the center of that, uh, that worship area will be the recreation of the Tabernacle of David, just as it was in the days of old. And God has promised that he would create that. In each entrance, there will be a 40-foot sculpture of the trumpet call. The trumpet call is the image that you see right behind me. It is a sculpture that I did in the year 2012. And I have since photographed it and enhanced it and made it a print that is available. The trumpet call, it shows Jesus coming in the clouds and four large trumpeting angels blowing the trumpet of the rapture. And then emerging through the wings, you can see many people in the clouds that are rising to meet Jesus in the air. It's a symbol of the rapture. And over the years, I have written what he's given me. I spent 12 years journaling, and I produced uh, a book which is on the website that you can read free online. It is called The Bridal Path, and it is a 55-page book that will give you a true understanding of what it means to become the bride of Christ and shows you how to become an overcomer and enter his bridal chamber. I also wrote uh, a little quiz called the Elijah Quiz. And this is a wonderful little quiz and uh, delightful to share. You can also take this quiz online. It's totally free on at brideofchrist.com and it's 25 multiple choice questions that uh, will let you know what, what you really know about the rapture. An engaging little quiz. Also over the years I have captured the beautiful jewels, the words of knowledge that God has given into our lives and they're to be shared with everyone called Stepping Stones from Heaven. And I've also written a little booklet called Keys to the Kingdom of Heaven. It explains very clearly how to enter the kingdom and what the keys are that Jesus gave for becoming born again and entering the kingdom. There is a difference between seeing the kingdom and entering the kingdom. And it's in the scriptures in the Gospel of John, very clearly stated. And I also have a little wedding invitation called the invitation, you're cordially invited to the wedding of the Lamb. And this is a little piece that takes the scripture and introduces it like an invitation to a wedding. It gives the time, which is at the trumpet call of God, at the rapture. First Thessalonians, the place, 
in the clouds, the dress from Isaiah 61.10, fine white linen, and the robe of righteousness. And then God's promise, for as a young man married the virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. And there's a little RSVP attached at the bottom. And also I had the privilege in 1998 to hear and receive a song which began while I was worshiping in the spirit in the shower. And significant because rain and water and the Holy Spirit, they're synonymous. And it became a full CD called The Wedding of the Lamb. And it is a song that is given away on the website also. You can hear the entire CD. But it is part of the Mount Zion Manifesto Ensemble, which I invite you to become a part of and help bring into existence to allow God to fulfill his last day's mandate because God has said in his word in Isaiah 2, 2, 3 and also repeated by Micah in Micah 4, 1 and 2 God says, but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And God also showed me in uh, Revelation he spoke into my heart that the United States shares the heartbeat of Israel, the USA. And that's why he put USA in the heart of the name Jerusalem. Jer, Jer USA, L-E-M, Jerusalem. And I believe that God is intending to build Mount Zion house of the Lord, this worship center in the United States in a mountainous area and that's where he will fulfill his harvest days promise to gather the nations and teach his paths and prepare his bride I have prepared so that you can see the vision and run with it this piece called Mount Zion Scripture Mandate. It's the manifesto. And it repeats right on the cover, Isaiah 2.2, 2, referring to the mountain of the house of the Lord. And this brochure gives the story of the creation of the peace. It gives the scripture references, God's promises in his word, the promises that he spoke into my life, words of knowledge which he told me are there to be claimed by those who come alongside me and help prepare this promise for the harvest and you get to see the entire building this one side Zion East is what this is there's there are four sides and this is Zion East It's a privilege to be able to share such a wonderful vision and to be a vessel that God has used and allowed me to develop my talents. But he told me way back in the beginning that he was my talent and that everything was to be for his glory. Everything for his glory. Not just edifying, but total absolute glory 
And he said that time is a concept that plays no part in heavenly realms, and it will move as he sees fit for his beloveds. I invite you to share in this wonderful vision for the harvest. I invite you to become a Mount Zion Hall of Warriors. We are, I have a plaque, uh, a certificate that I've prepared that will place you in our Hall of Warriors as a member. And you can see it right there. That comes with, with all of this when you become a member of the Mount Zion Project. I thank you and God bless you.